Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha Kurash. <clears throat> Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I just wanted to do this short video to acknowledge, you know, um, the Holy Scriptures and the words written therein being faithful and true. <clears throat> as we deal with the prophecy of the Euphrates River drying, that's actually happening in the times we're living in. Okay, let's get the prophecy real quick. This is the book of uh, Revelation. Okay, the 16th chapter and the 12th verse. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates. Okay. And the water thereof was dried up. Okay. Not only is the Euphrates drying up, but the Tigris, all right, as well which I believe the Euphrates pours into the Tigris. Okay, so we're living in a time of great biblical prophecy being fulfilled. So there's an angel responsible for this. Okay. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. All right, and you, when you read it in the NLT, <clears throat> which the kings of the east are the Russians, Gog and Magog, which are going to be used to set everything off, all right, for World War III. As you can see, they're in the midst of everything. In the NLT, it says, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. And it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies towards the west without hindrance. Okay. Now, when you go from where Russia is located and you go west, that's pointing towards the Middle East where these nations are being gathered for war. Okay. And ultimately, we know Russia has an evil eye towards the west, which is Babylon the Great the hindermost of the earth, which is going to be destroyed by fire, America. Now, there's actually a video here that I'll pull up. Okay, that speaks to that prophecy. As you can see here, Russian military builds bridge to move across the river Euphrates, and that was five years ago. All right, and why are they putting military men all right, and setting up shop over in this region, okay, because war is getting ready to be popped off. War is being prepared, okay? The Russian military has built a bridge across the Euphrates River near Der al -Zor, this to move troops and vehicles to the other side to support a Syrian army offensive. Russia they would not be able to do that if the water levels all right, we're higher. But the Heavenly Father put the spirit <laughs> right through an angel that the river be dried up. Now, a lot of wells were shut down, but that's still the Heavenly Father through his only begotten son, through the holy angels. All right, putting the minds, putting the, putting it in the minds of men to do things to help further it drying up. As well as naturally it's drying up, which when rivers are dry, Okay, that destroys economies. It's a sign of decay. All right, let's keep listening. Russian media reports <clears throat> indicate the military erected the bridge under fire from Islamist militants in less than 48 hours. It could be used to deliver humanitarian aid and to evacuate the injured. Reports suggest up to 8,000 vehicles weighing up to 50 tons would be able to cross the bridge in any 24 hour period including tax. They're 
you go. Russian military builds bridge to move across Euphrates River. Let's read the prophecy again. Okay, Revelation 16 and 12, it says, And the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the ways of the kings of the east might be prepared. And we just showed you one video, okay, that makes this scripture a reality. And we know there's much more happening, there's much more videos, or right? even if you just look up, to go to YouTube and just type in, Okay, give me one second. Euphrates River drying up, okay? And there's things being discovered as well, you know, as it dries. One showed an ancient city. All right, today something, 16 hours ago, today something terrifying just showed up after Euphrates River dried up. I have to check that out. Okay. Now, the priest Sha'ar just did this video here, which I'll tap into that as well. All right, but let's uh, click this real quick to see what this is. Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. يعني المرة اليوم تمشي سبعة كيلو متر تجيب سطر مية يشربون عيالها. This used to be almost completely underwater. The Euphrates River is one of the Middle East's most important water sources. Over the centuries, this river has played a vital role in shaping the lives and culture of the people who live along its banks. Nowadays, the river is drying up, causing a severe drought that is affecting agriculture and water supplies. In today's video, we'll delve into the reason behind the drying up of the Euphrates River, its devastating effects, and the astonishing discoveries that scientists have made. We'll also take a closer look at the river's historical significance, including its connections with the stories of Nimrod and Abraham. The Euphrates River is one of the longest rivers in Western Asia, stretching over 2,700 kilometers from its source in the Taurus Mountains of Turkey to its mouth at the Shat al Arab. And you can see that it pours um, along with the Tigris River, okay? into this body of water here. I forget the name of it. I don't want to misspeak, so I won't say it here. But um, all of these things are mentioned in the scriptures. Okay? When you go into uh, the book of Genesis, all right, these are two of uh, the rivers, all right, that poured and ultimately uh, surrounded the garden, the garden of Eden, okay? And great, Spiritual activity is taking place. As a matter of fact, let's get another scripture. Um, the book of Revelation 9, I believe. Yep. Revelation, the ninth chapter in the 14 verse, it says, Saying to the sixth angel, which have the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in a great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, in a year for to slay the third part of men. All right. Now the third part of men, you have the sons of God, the sons of men, and the sons of the wicked. All right. Ultimately, um, these angels are set forth to bring forth war. All right. Which is going to lead to the end of Esau's world. Okay. And this is uh, what, what, what's being prepared in the planet Earth. War is being prepared. Prepare war. This is a major aspect of prophecy. All right. And it's beautiful because no other philosophy, no other book, Islam, no other uh, 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 the, the, the Quran, Christianity. They're not talking about this. No other philosophy. <laughs> all right. Outside of the truth speaks on this. Now, of course, Christians have the Bible, but they're not going into this real, really hardcore. Vocab Malone, when's the last time he did a video going into the great river Euphrates drying up in the end of Esau's world in the kingdom of heaven, which is the tabernacle of David being established on earth. Show me a video of him going into that. They want this world to continue. No other philosophy, no other book is speaking as the Holy Scriptures is speaking. Okay? As a matter of fact, let's, uh, let's get a scripture here. The book of uh, Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Okay, which... 
you know, this whole chapter is about, you know, Armageddon, World War Three. All right. But the main thing is Edom being taken down. Isaiah 34 and 5. My sword shall be finished. As you read, let's read it in NLT. And when my sword has finished its work in the heavens, it will fall upon Idumea, the nation I have marked for destruction. So this all is leading to the to, to the end of Esau's world in the beginning of Jacob's world. Okay, the Lord says he has a sacrifice in Basra. Okay, which is very interesting. A uh egg factory in Basra, Connecticut. All right, just was burned down. So the Lord is saying a lot if you're looking at everything with a spiritual eye. Okay, so in this chapter, okay, verse 8, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance in the year of the recompenses of the controversy of Zion. All of this is happening. Okay, for what? Let's read the next verse in the NLT. The streams of Edom will be filled with a burning pitch and the ground will be covered with fire. So this is all about the destruction of Babylon the Great, which Gog and Magog is going to lead the charge. Now, when you go down, all right, it gives the judgment. But verse 34 and 16 says, Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. Okay? <laughs> for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit hath gathered them, and he hath cast a lot for them. Okay, and have divided it unto them by line. That's why we have the Holy Scriptures. It was promised we would have the Holy Scriptures. Okay, the Heavenly Father was over the process of how we got the Bible. All right, even when we were in hardcore captivity, for us to be cut off and further confused, he allowed the slave masters to take the Bible and, and, and remove 70% of it and present what is known as the slave Bible, which we have done videos on that which is the, the, the where plantation Christianity stems from. That's why they don't go into the, the, the volume of the book, all right, to wake our people up. They use it for as a form of control. That's what the slave master did. And the Lord, uh, uh, according to prophecy, we would be blinded. Okay, but after three days and a half, the spirit of life from on high entered into the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and they stood up on their feet as a great spiritual army. So he hath cast a lot unto them and have divided it unto them by line, and they shall possess it forever from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Okay? So the, 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 the truth, the scriptures, the scrolls would always be with us. We have it now, all right, in these various different, you know, translations. But we can go back to the scrolls, but ultimately through the spirit of the Lord, we're able to discern what's what, who's who, and break things down. So none of the these these uh, prophecies will want a mate is going to fulfill what the heavenly father have commanded. And that's what we see happening in the earth in these latter days. OK, the the the, the, the words are what faithful and true. All right, going back to this, uh, let's see, what were we looking at here? <clears throat> yeah, so you have the Euphrates and the Tigris, and they pour into the, this, the Persian Gulf. Okay, which that's mentioned uh, as the, the hinder or one of those parts in the book of, uh, hey, you hear, the, you hear the lightning, you hear the thunder, Okay. You hear the thunder, the Lord is getting ready to come deliver us, man, and take down Esau, Edom. But yeah, the Tigris and the Euphrates pour into the Persian Gulf. That's that body of water, as you can see, two, the two uh, 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 rivers pouring, meeting together to pour into the, the Persian Gulf. That's exactly what that is. Okay? Waterway in Iraq. The river has played a crucial role in the development and prosperity of numerous civilizations throughout history, making it one of the most historically significant rivers in the world. The Euphrates River is mentioned in the Bible and is connected to the stories of Nimrod and Prophet Abraham. According to the Bible, Nimrod was a mighty hunter and a king who had established the city of Babel, also known as Babylon. On the and we're in Babylon the Great, 
Nimrod established Babel, which means confusion. Okay. <laughs> and the Lord, you know, broke it all up. That was the first, all right, one world attempt at a one world order. And we are seeing the same thing in our times. Banks of the Euphrates River. Babel was a center of power and civilization, and the story of Nimrod is associated with the attempt to build the Tower of Babel, which was meant to reach the heavens. However, this tower became a symbol of human pride and ambition, and God punished the builders by confounding their languages and scattering them across the earth. The story of Prophet Abraham is also connected to the Euphrates River in the... See, and that's getting ready to happen again in, a, in, a, in another sense. The Lord is getting ready to break up this NWO. Okay, because this is nothing but a technological tower of Babel. Okay, and that was built along the, 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 the lines of the Euphrates River, the original one. But now we're in a spiritual Babylon, the great. All right, because you have Babel, which is synonymous with Nimrod. Then you have the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which is synonymous with Nebuchadnezzar the Chaldeans. Then you have Babylon the Great, which is here where we are, all right, suffering our final captivity where the Lord is getting ready to rescue us. As the scriptures say, there shall I go to Babylon. Let's get that in Micah. Uh, Micah 4 and 10, be in pain <clears throat> and labor and bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shall thou go forth out of the city, all right, we were kicked out of our land, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt even go to Babylon, all right, and there shall thou be delivered. There shall Yahweh redeem thee from the hand of thy enemies, all right, and it's also known as what? The land of Nimrod in prophecy. So we're definitely in those times. This is Micah 5 and 6, <clears throat> a prophecy of the Lord's return and war happening in the earth. Okay. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword. Assyria in prophecy is synonymous with Babylon the Great as well. Assyria, Egypt is synonymous with captivity, land of our captivity. All right. They shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword. In the land of Nimrod, <clears throat> okay, <laughs> in the land of Nimrod and the interests thereof, <clears throat> thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian, okay, which is synonymous of the oppressor, when he cometh into our land and when he treadeth within our borders, because they're going to come after us, okay, they're definitely going to come after us, man, but let's uh, stay on topic. Let's get a little bit more of this, and then I'll make a few other points. In. Bible. Prophet Abraham was born in the city of Ur, which was located near the Euphrates River in what is now southern Iraq. He is regarded as the father of the Jewish people and is considered a key figure in the history of monotheism. The Bible recounts his journey to the land of Canaan. He's the father of the Israelites. Okay. And of the 12 tribes, you have Judah, the fourth born son of Jacob. Okay, the line in which King David, King Solomon, and Yahweh Shai would come from. Okay, through Judah's son named Perez. Okay, so it's not he's just not the father of the Jewish nation. He's the father of the Israelites. He's the father of the, the, the promise, the twelve tribes, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And his role as the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob, and the ancestor of the twelve tribes of Israel. The Euphrates River is mentioned several times in the Bible, and it is seen as a symbol of the prosperity and power of the civilizations that have developed along its banks. The river's abundant water resources and fertile land have made it an important center of commerce and agriculture throughout history, and the stories of Nimrod and the prophet Abraham reflect the enduring significance of the Euphrates River in the religious and cultural traditions of the region. Besides its connections with Abraham and Nimrod, the earliest civilizations are also known to have settled along the Euphrates River. The Sumer see that? You see what it was known, what, what, it, what it dealt with? The earliest civilizations are also known to have settled along the Euphrates River. Drinking water, irrigation, recreation, industrial. So the, the Euphrates River drying, all right, yeah, for that region, 
it means, you know, uh, uh, a lack, all right, decay. But overall, the spirit of this system, which is Babylon the Great, all right, and it's, and it's coming in the spirit of Nimrod, all right, is being what? Drained, all right? And the Heavenly Father is preparing a situation on earth to where destruction is coming to set up the kingdom of heaven, man. The Sumerian civilization was the first to develop in what is now southern Iraq around 4500 BCE. The Sumerians built a complex system of canals and levees to manage the river's floods, and the fertile land along the river's banks allowed them to cultivate crops and build cities. This region became known as the Fertile Crescent, and the Euphrates River was integral to its growth and prosperity. The Akkadian Empire, which emerged around 2334 BCE, was one of the first great empires of the ancient world and extended its rule over the Fertile Crescent. The Akkadians built a sophisticated system of water management and agricultural production, utilizing the Euphrates River as the backbone of their economy. The Babylonian Empire, which rose to power in the 18th century BCE, was one of the most influential civilizations in ancient history. The yes, the Neo-Babylonian Empire that he's going into. Babylonians made extensive use of the Euphrates River, building canals and dikes to control its flow and irrigate the fertile land along its banks. The city of Babylon, located on the river's banks, was one of the greatest cities of the ancient world, renowned for its monumental structures like the Hanging Gardens and the Ishtar Gate. In the 7th century BCE, the Assyrian Empire rose to power, and it also made extensive use of the Euphrates River. The Assyrians built a large network of canals. So you can look this video up. It's going into a lot of history. Okay, but apparently something just happened. I wanted to get to that point, but I don't... Let's see here. Countries cooperate on water-related issues, but it has had limited success in resolving the conflict over the Euphrates River. Despite these agreements, the countries continue to have disputes over water usage and have not been able to... Yeah, you have to look it up, but I, w I wanted to know exactly what was terrifying that happened, you know. <laughs> temperatures, leading to more evaporation and further reducing the amount of water in the river. The drying up of the Euphrates River is having a significant impact on the countries that rely on it for water and food security, particularly Syria and Iraq. The decline in water levels is causing a range of challenges for these countries, from declining crop yields and increasing competition for water resources to growing social and economic tensions. In Iraq, the Euphrates River is an essential source of water for agriculture, industry, and domestic use. The decline in water levels is having a major impact on the country's agricultural sector, with farmers facing decreased crop yields and reduced access to water for irrigation. And what power ordained this? Okay, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, via one of the angels in their order to do this. This is having a knock-on effect on food security in Iraq, with the country relying heavily on agriculture to feed its population. The decrease in water levels is also affecting the country's ability to generate electricity, as hydropower plants are increasingly unable to operate at full capacity. In addition to these economic challenges, the drying up of the Euphrates River is also causing growing social tension in Iraq. The river is an important source of water for pastoral communities, and the decline in the water levels is putting increasing pressure on these communities, leading to growing competition for water resources and conflicts between different groups. The government is facing growing pressure to address these issues, but so far, solutions have been elusive. The drying of the Euphrates River is also affecting the environment in both Iraq and Syria. The river is a crucial habitat for many species of fish and other aquatic life, and the decline in water levels is putting these species at risk. The river is also an important source of fresh water for migratory birds, and the decline in water levels is having a negative impact on these species as well. The drying up of the Euphrates River has led to a number of interesting discoveries in the countries that rely on it for water, including the uncovering of caves, tunnels, and other ancient structures. As the water levels have declined, archaeological sites that were previously submerged are now becoming visible, providing a window into the past and offering insights into the history of the region. In fact, 
the drying up of the Euphrates River has revealed a number of ancient structures, including the remains of the ancient city of Shushtar, which was once an important center of irrigation and agriculture in the region. The city was built in the 5th century BC, and its remains include canals, dams, and other structures that were used to manage the water of the Euphrates River. These structures provide a unique insight into the advanced engineering and agriculture practices of the ancient world and are of great interest to archaeologists and historians. The drying up of the Euphrates River has caused a severe drought in Iraq. Recently, a drought caused by the drying of the Euphrates River in Iraq led to the discovery of an ancient city believed to have been a major city in the Mitanni Empire. See, there you go. So, hey, these, these prophecies are coming to pass now real quick. If you look at over the years how the Euphrates has dried, you know, the, this is an example. As you can see, the top figure, okay, looks like, you know, it's more full. But over the years, look at how it's dried up. Now, that character, as you can see there at the bottom, what does that remind you of? Okay, that reminds you of the Omega sign, which Omega means end. Okay, Omega, the end of something, the 24th and last letter of the Greek alphabet, okay, essentially means the end of something, the last ultimate lemon or the great end. Now we know according to the Holy Scriptures, all right, if we just type in Omega, all right, <laughs> Yahweh Shai lets you know. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Okay? Revelation 21 and 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Okay? And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountains of the water of life freely, which is this doctrine, which he's, he's definitely pouring out his spirit on his men. All right? Going to this word Omega. All right, he's the Alpha and Omega. Okay, the last. So the, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to send back his only begotten son, um, Hamashiach Yahawashai. All right, and the great river Euphrates prophecy is definitely being fulfilled in our time. We're getting ready to get the hell up out of here. Shalom.